1939, 14-year-old Zygmunt Bauman escaped the Nazi onslaught on Poland by fleeing to Russia. Five years later, he returned as a convinced communist working with the secret service of a Polish army fighting under Soviet command. After the war, he became an academic who gradually rejected the official version of Marxism. In 1968, during a state-sponsored anti-Semitic purge, he left Poland for Israel. As a non-Zionist, he was unhappy there, and in 1971 joined Leeds University, becoming one of their most illustrious professors. He has published more than 50 books, seeking to understand the society we live in, and in his ninth decade is still writing. Teenagers today, uh, they, uh, for example, uh, will tell you that they have 1,500 friends because they belong to Facebook, you know, it's very easy to have friends there. Uh, I don't think that in all my life I collected 1,500, but they do it in one evening, in one sitting in front of a computer. To analyze the idea of friendship, to explain what the French and uh, friends are for, uh, what is the difference between the kind of friends uh, who are listed on uh, the Facebook uh, website and, uh, and the friends which hold hands together, you know, and who are there when they are needed most, and uh, uh, with the uh, as uh, Ray Paul, another sociologist in Britain, called the convoy through the turbulent waters of life. For the time being, we are watching uh, uh, apprentice, apprenticeship, uh, the apprentice. sugar, yeah. The apprentice. Uh, yeah, the apprentice, or uh, Big Brother, they have their absolutely the same uh, message is uh, conveyed by them, namely that uh, every week somebody must be kicked out. That there's a law of nature that's beyond dispute. And the only problem is who you will be, me or him. Uh, so the message is absolutely anti-solidarity message. You can't gain by cooperating. There are more and more of people who are not only deprived of jobs, but who really believe themselves to be unwanted and redundant. Society would be better off if they disappeared somehow. That's, that's the most tragic aspect, because that leaves a trauma which even a relative recovery won't cure. Uh, that's, the, that's, that's the problem. I came to the conclusion at the end of my life, with one foot in grave, uh, that uh, just society has only one definition. Just society is a society which doesn't believe that it is just enough. I believe that there is no such thing as once and for all, for eternity, just society. But I believe deeply that people will never stop looking for it. Oh, that's my hope. Uh, you know, they are pessimists and they are optimists. You know the difference between them? The optimist thinks that this is the best possible world. And the pessimist suspects that the optimist may be right. I think from the trilogy, I call it modern trilogy, which uh, three books which succeed each other in a short, relatively short time. It was Legislators and Interpreters, that was the first book, the second was Modernity and the Holocaust, and the third was Modernity and Ambivalence. That set the stage, which I never left since then. You know, and uh, I just became one topic sociologist in a sense. 
it doesn't mean being moral that you will invariably select good from evil. That would be even impossible given the unconditional nature of, my, of responsibility. So whatever good you are doing, it is always good enough. So it's always tinged and contaminated with some dose of, of, uh, of uh, evil. So being moral does not mean doing, being a goody, goody, you know, um, doing always goody things. It simply means being aware there is a problem, because there is good and there is evil, and you have to select. Full stop. Since modernity and the Holocaust, uh, we are returning again to this book, uh, where I found out that I can learn enormous amount of things from historians, theologians, philosophers, but nothing at all from sociologists. They have nothing to say about it. Since then, I virtually stopped talking or writing to sociologists. So I am very uh, unsociological sociologist. Uh, yeah. And there, there are probably quite a few sociologists who wouldn't count me among their uh, mates. I live very long. I went through several social systems and so several very different, radically different conditions. And uh, I came to the conclusion that there is no perfect balancing between freedom and uh, security. In every settlement, there will be something outstanding. So it's like pendulum. We go all the way towards freedom, and then we start dreaming about security. We go all the way towards security, and then uh, Orwell uh, will be f f paralyzed with fear that the uh, Soldier's boot will trample human face, you know. Was I a moral man? In terms of daily morality, in terms of morality which does not take, uh, take into account trains going to Treblinka and gas chambers and uh, uh, barbed wires of Auschwitz and so on, he was a moral man. What is required of a moral man exposed only to normal daily life? Be kind to your, and helpful to your neighbor, be uh, loving to your uh, wife, be caring of your children, and uh, help the blind man to cross the road. In these terms, Eichmann was 100% moral person. He knew what is good, what is bad, and as much as he could, he tried to do good things. Uh, history of humanity will be probably like uh, it was until now, namely stumbling from one trouble to another. But uh, I wouldn't say that I'm optimist, I wouldn't say that I'm pessimist, I told you many times already that. I think that there is a third category. People are not divided into optimist and pessimist. There is a third category as well, which is simply people hoping, hoping that uh, uh, that that uh, humans can find in themselves strength to overcome our big trouble they are in, and that is worth doing, and uh, uh, it's wor worth dedicating your life to it, really. I think that uh, the chance of getting uh, life better is increased when you get knowledge and understanding of the mechanisms which make things go and makes people do what they are doing. Without that knowledge, the chances will be smaller. I, I'm not saying that uh, getting this sort of knowledge is a guarantee that uh, the purpose will be achieved, but it makes it more a little bit more probable. So it is worth doing.